how I was able to get my Master 128 connected to the outside world using an old laptop. Sounds simple and conceptually it is. I mean if it wasn't simple I wouldn't be able to do it but there are a few little bumps and scrapes along the way. So the tricky part with the BBC is that not only does it use a DIN connector for its serial port but it uses a domino shaped DIN connector. That's where you have four pins set up in a square with the central pin. It's a five pin setup and it looks like the number five on a on a domino. Ergo they call it a domino type connector. Now there's an excellent resource online which shows how to wire up a domino connector for a BBC Micro. I'll put the link in the description and there may even be a screenshot. I've already soldered it up. That was a bit of a faff. It's not quite 100% complete as you can probably tell. And also as you can probably tell, probably one of the dodgiest cables ever because I've used two old cables to make one serial cable and of course it's not shielded or anything like that so it probably sucks for RF and, and what have you but for short distances and for what I'm using it for and it's a fairly low speed it's not a big deal I've had this up to 9600 uh, bits per second or 9600 board is what they call it that's another debate for another day board versus BPS but that's out of scope only a couple of instances where there's been a bit of corruption, but again, not really a big deal. This is just showing the end result, not how I got there. So if this was like um, um, a high school assignment, I'd get a fail because I've got the end result, but I didn't show my workings. Feeding into the other end of this cable is that there, which is just a bog standard nine pin DB9 style serial cable plug, whatever going into a slightly aging Dell Latitude D610 laptop running Lubuntu. So the best way to describe the master's role is effectively acting as a dumb terminal, hooking into a GNU slash Linux machine. If this uh, master series machine was used in a university in the late 80s, it might have been similar to how a, a machine may have connected up to, say, a Unix uh, mini computer or something like that, or or what have you. So first things first is I'm going to plug everything in and then I'm going to switch it on and we'll see what happens. One of the neatest things I think as far as the BBC Master Series is concerned is it has a number of really useful productivity tools built into its ROM. You can call them up just like you would any other ROM. So one of the applications is a terminal emulator which it's, it's a fairly basic terminal emulator like, but if you just want to get online and have a bit of a mooch around it'll do the job admirably. So we'll call that up. Okay, so when you're in terminal mode, it'll have that little equal sign there. In one of the BBC master users guides, all the details on how to use terminal are contained within that particular manual, link in the description. Obviously, because it's in terminal mode, not all the usual BBC commands will work, but there are a handful that will, including mode. So let's put it into mode zero so we get sweet 80 column goodness. Of course, you could always use mode seven or mode one or whatever. But if you're dealing with your Unix shell type thing or GNU slash Linux shell, bash shell, however you want to call it, 80 columns all the way. Now we have our terminal ready. We're just going to switch this on. Of course, one thing you want to do is once you switch this on is hit return. I'm going to do something here. Check out what happens when I do this. I had to move that laptop because there's no RF shielding, even though it's only running at 9600 bits per second. Obviously, with the amount of well, lack of RF shielding and the fact that this is just a bodge, you could see that having the laptop too close to the master, too close to the telly, and too close to the router has obviously conspired to give us a whole bunch of garbage, as the French would say. But now you can see, nice and clear, caps lock. Gotta switch that off, of course, because this type of setup is case sensitive. Don't mind me, I just made a typo with my password. Let's try that again. So effectively what we have is all this stuff here, just like you would if it was on a PC or a Raspberry Pi through a terminal. 
So this means we can do all the usual cool terminally stuff. So if you want to just have a look at um, the directory, which is of course ls, we've got all the usual stuff on here. We've got FTP, we've got email, the BBC master 128, the, the terminal program has support for, I think it's ANSI. Don't hold me to that, but I do remember reading that in the manual. So that means we should be able to use some of the stuff that requires a little bit of moving around with cursors, such as no. So I'm not sure if it's because the Beeb's struggling with all the codes to have the full screen nano experience or if it's because of the interference by not having a, a proper shielded cable or what, but there is a little bit of corruption on the screen here. Not a big deal though. Just push enter and away we go. So. Okay, so let's write that out. So control and O, file name to write, testes.txt. That's an old joke. I always call my test files testes for some reason. I'm sure a lot of men do that because we're very immature. So where are my testes? Okay, I found my testes, so that's good. <laughs> nice. So that was all fun and games, but where the real power of this sort of setup lies is in the fact that you can leverage off whatever networking interfaces are on the PC side. Now this laptop happens to have Wi-Fi and this Wi-Fi just happens to be connected to the outside world. If you don't believe me, I'm going to try pinging something. Now there are other cool tricks here such as Gopher, which was sort of a, and it still is, like a proto-web. There's there's better descriptions of Gopher out there than I can come up with, but what it effectively is, is essentially an online resource where people put text-based pages and all that sort of stuff so that people can actually see what's going on using a text-based setup. And it was, it had a very, very brief period in the early to mid 90s where it was quite popular. This was before the web really took off. And this was around the same era that the bulletin board system was at its peak. Okay, so there's lots of things we can do here. We can actually search on the gopher space. So I don't know what we're going to find, but there's our item number 12. I know, why don't we search for Reddit? And would you believe it? There is actually a Reddit interface to gopher. It's a read-only interface. And given the amount of graphical content on Reddit, its use is perhaps somewhat limited, but it's kind of cool. Let's go and enter a subreddit. In fact, I reckon the most appropriate subreddit we could enter into. Let's go to Retro Battle Stations. Now bear in mind with all the graphic content in Retro Battle Stations we won't be seeing a heck of a lot, but at least we can see that it's there. The text from Retro Battle Stations is sitting there looking all fine and dandy. Why don't we see what the upcoming Retro Battle Stations contests are looking like? So that's telling us that uh, BBS week, which of course is happening this week, this is being made on the 20th of February. So you can see there, it's this isn't a video about how to use Gopher, this is just a show and tell to say that Gopher's out there. So we'll quit out of that. You can even use the web on this, albeit in a fairly very rudimentary sort of way. So if you've got text-based websites, it's absolutely useful. So what I might do is I might actually go to links. I'm going to accept all cookies because I like to live dangerously. And I can't be asked hitting the um, Y key all the time. And we'll go to one of the classic web 1.0 sites, Cold of the Dead Cow, which was an old hacking group from back in the day. There we go. It certainly is super low bandwidth. This is how we used to use stuff back in the day. You know, just use the usual keys to get around, tab and whatnot. Let's see what Wikipedia looks like. There is actually a version of Wikipedia somewhere on Gopher, I believe. It is, is it Gopherpedia, I think? 
So this is the Wikipedia page of the Cult of the Dead Cow showing in beautiful monochrome web 1.0. But what I'll do now is I'll log into a BBS, a good old timey BBS using... That's a good point. I don't think this is 24 columns. I reckon it's more like 30 or 32. I normally go 80 by 30 when I'm in this mode. Um, ANSI. Yeah, so we can see here I'm now reading all about retro activities using a retro computer by telnetting into a BBS. It's a really cool thing that you can do pretty easily with an old computer and a not so old computer. So now is probably as good a time as any for me to bring this video to a halt. And until next time, see you later.